All right, guys, so today I want to talk about uh, R-Sync. I recently learned about it, and I looked up some information on it, got very intrigued on it, uh, looked like a really cool program, so I wanted to use it, but I run Windows primarily, unfortunately. I'm still a Windows peasant, so I went and I looked up online how you can run R-Sync on Windows, and I found a guy who had a very nice tutorial on how to run it with Sigwin. I'll link that in the description below, but then I realized that Windows 10, they just released uh, Bash for Windows 10, so you can actually have a Ubuntu subsystem running inside of Windows 10 just right there at the command line, which is very nice uh, for me because I love using Linux. Uh, so I came up with a little solution of my own that fit my needs uh, with rsync, and so I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So a few prerequisites uh, to get this solution working is you're going to need Bash for Windows 10, and there's a few little core. That, that's it actually, and there's a few. You're going to need Notepad plus plus too. I should mention, or some other kind of um, text editor that's capable of doing Unix encoding instead of uh, the crappy Windows encoding of uh, text files. And so there's a few caveats to Bash for Windows that we need to discuss. So first off, you're going to go to, um, actually no, not add or remove features, you're going to go to this nasty, disgusting settings menu. Uh, we're going to go to uh, developer options. I don't even, I, I don't know where this is. Oh, it's update and security, whatever. So update and security for developers. You need to select developer mode, and I think it'll prompt you. Are you sure? You say yes. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is add a not programs. Add features. Yeah, turn Windows features on or off, and you're gonna scroll down here to Windows Subsystem for Linux Beta, and enable that, and then hit OK, and it'll install some stuff. Uh, theoretically and I should also mention uh, you have to have OS build number 14393 or later for this to work there's a specific Windows update that allows you to uh, download and install bash for Windows and it's uh, oh, I can't remember the exact update number maybe it is maybe the update is build 14393 I, I don't know but apparently you also have to be running a 64-bit version of Windows, uh, which if you're not, then you're probably not worried about doing a Linux backup system on your computers. Anyway, but I digress. So after you enable developer options and enable bash subsystem, then you're going to open up your command prompt and type bash. And it's going to take a long time installing a bunch of stuff. It'll prompt you for an administrator password. Uh, or for a username and password, so you punch in what you want your uh, Ubuntu username and password to be, and then you'll get this nice prompt. Uh, so first thing you're gonna do is run sudo apt get update. And it will go ahead and update all of your, uh, all of your, are these repositories? I, I don't know the technical term for it, and I just, Anyways, you will update all of your packages, that's what it is, uh, package lists, rather. And so after you do all that, then you'll see that rsync is built in to the bash subsystem as it is. So that's useful. But one problem that I had with uh, the bash subsystem for Windows is that whenever I tried to use the sudo command or administrative command, I would always get this nasty feedback message saying unable to resolve host uh, and then the name of my computer. And so the way you fix that is you're going to do uh, sudo, sudo nano, excuse me, uh, slash etsy slash host. And then it'll bring you to this file. And so mine did not have this line right here. It just looked exactly like this. And so you're going to have to add that line, which of course I just deleted, so give me a second. No. 
So you're gonna have to add this line 127.0.1.1 and then the name of your computer, mind of which is, you know, whatever generic crap Windows decided to call it. So after you add that line in, then hopefully you'll be able to run sudo commands on your computer because you'll need those uh, to do the update. So once all that's done, then I'm gonna go ahead and exit bash, exit command prompt, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to get this whole thing working. So I wanted to back up a few different directories. One, my documents, uh, my pictures, my OneDrive folder, mostly just as a test, because I mean, it, it is a cloud sync, or it is a folder that gets sunk to the cloud. And also my desktop, I think those are the four ones I backed up. And so I went and I made a little bash script, which I'll show you guys as soon as I figure out where I'm at. There we go. So I made this bash script, called it backup.bash. And this is why this is why the Linux encoder Linux or text Unix text encoder is important. Because you'll notice that it's all on a single line here if you do it in Windows. And that's because Windows uses uh, forward slash R forward slash N as a carriage return or an enter and Linux uses just slash n, or forward slash n. So when we open this up with Notepad++, you can see it's encoded properly because it's Unix. And let's see, can I... Uh, well, it's, it's not gonna mess it up for me. But anyways, maybe it's UTF-8, I don't know. But so anyways, here we go. So my bash script is, uh, you know, bin bash, you need that, and then I say if change directory to mount D. Uh, D is my backup drive. Uh, it's just an external hard drive, nothing special. NTFS uh, file system, just 500 gig external drive. And so I created a folder inside there called backups. And here's my four folders on my PC that I've been backing up using rsync. And you'll need to have a backups folder or some, some directory on the drive itself that you want to save your backups inside of, and I'll explain that in just a second. But so I say, if change directory to mount D backups, then go ahead and run rsync for my documents folder, my OneDrive folder, my pictures, and my desktop. And uh, rsync slash rt, r is recursive, so get all subdirectories and files. And then uh, t is maintain the original timestamp and verbose means to list out all those files as it updates them. And then what I did here is I wanted a timestamp and a message saying whether it succeeded or failed to be saved in a log. So I said, okay, echo uh, date, which on, I'll just open this up. So if I run date, then it just returns, you know, Sunday, December 11th at midnight 46. And then I also want to get to echo success, so echo success. And so the easiest way to concatenate those is that I could find online. I'm not going to pretend to be some kind of bash expert at all. So if I do that, then, you know, it gives me a timestamp and it tells me success. And if it couldn't change directories to the backups folder, then it tells me Hey, there's no backup drive, and it tells and it goes and saves that in uh, this backup log file that I made. So, uh, just to go ahead and prove that this actually works, uh, I'm gonna run it. But I should explain the automatic backup thing first. Okay, so. So what I did to make this automatic, I told this to run every day at noon, and I haven't exactly been able to test that fully yet because I created it earlier today. But so I went into the task scheduler, I created a basic task, you give it a name, just anything, uh, obviously name it something better than that for your own purposes, and I want mine to back up daily, so I selected daily, uh, you set your time and date, and then I said start a program. 
and the programmer script. Uh, so Bash on Windows is slightly different than what you might expect if you're used to working with um, Mac or just straight up Linux. Uh, you can't just call your Bash script like you normally would. Like I can't just you know run dot slash uh, backup dot Bash because Windows doesn't know what dot slash means. You have to tell it for you have to tell it specifically Bash. And then in the arguments, I do uh, command uh, dash, which is denoted by dash C. And then you go to the directory of your script, and then script.bash, or whatever you called it, whatever your subdirectories are. And then you'll hit next and finish, and you'll pretty much be done. So just to show you mine, uh, let's see, actions. I put mine in my user folder and on the bash subsystem uh, it doesn't work with drives like Windows does it works or it, it mounts physical drives to folder locations uh, kind of like emulated storage on Android well it is emu whatever you, you know what you get my drift so if I see so if I uh, CD to mount then you can see I have CD and F drive on my computer and C, D, and F. Eventually I want to get this working for my remote storage. This is just a file server slash Plex server uh, for me and I want to get it backing up to that location but I, for the life of me I can't get Bash for Windows to mount remote storage uh, just proving I'm not crazy. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, not P. Oh. Um. And I put this in home. Okay, so it looks like it worked just fine, but if I CD to home and my folder then hey there's NetShare and it shows there's nothing in there and if I open up my storage server you can clearly see that there is stuff in there so that's not working yet I have no idea why because I don't get an error message or anything I'll keep working on that but just to prove that this works uh, let's see I do have my drive plugged in now and one thing that I feel like I should mention just for debugging purposes, if you're running bash in the command prompt, then I've noticed for some reason uh, you the or if you unplug and plug in drives, then bash takes a while to recognize them. Either it takes a while to recognize them or it just won't recognize that you've made the change if you're still within the bash subsystem. So you always have to exit and then do run your test and then go back into bash. So I'm just going to X out of command prompt entirely for my purposes. So let's see, I'm going to run the backup and sending incremental file list. I've already run this several times and you might have seen <clears throat> you might have seen that I had a few errors in there. It said uh, there were a few directories that were protected and it couldn't back them up, but I, for, I looked at what those directories were. It was like some kind of weird configuration folder for OneDrive, which I really don't care about, because uh, I'm probably gonna get rid of, or I'm probably gonna stop backing up my OneDrive to this um, removable hard drive anyways. And so now let me go ahead and unplug the removable hard drive, and I'll show you exactly why I kind of built this uh, okay, so here's my log file that I had it output to, and as you can see, it said it ran, you know, a minute or 30 seconds ago, and it ran successfully, so that's good. And if we go in here, then let's just do my desktop, and you can see all of my files here on my desktop were successfully backed up to here, as well as you'll notice that there's some files that I've deleted. Uh, these three specifically. I, I've deleted those files and 
it, they're still here and that's a really nice feature of rsync so that's one of the reasons why I wanted it because I'm constantly deleting files because I don't have a very big hard drive on this computer I opted for an NVMe drive and for those of you wondering why um, here you go sequential read speeds of almost 2300 megabytes write speed of almost a gigabyte a second so that's that's why I opted for an NVMe drive but when I bought it it was still uh, oh, how much did I pay for that stupid thing? It was either a dollar a gigabyte, or maybe even a little bit more than that. So I, yeah, I wasn't gonna go with a 512 gig drive. So I'm constantly, you know, updating my or clearing out space on my C drive, and I wanted some way to see all the files that I've deleted previously, and rsync was the easiest way that I could see. So we said, so I just showed you that the sync ran successfully. So now I'm going to go ahead and unplug my D drive. And when I pull this back up, this PC, no more D drive, as you can see. So now I'm going to rerun the sync and you saw it just disappeared. When I reload the file, then it tells me that at midnight 54 which is now it ran but there was no backup drive and so it just stopped or it, it just quit the process and so I'm gonna another thing uh, I can't remember if I pointed this out earlier or not but I feel like it's worth mentioning twice just because I screwed up pretty bad with this so you'll notice that I made I made it look specifically for the backups folder on my D drive and now I'm going to tell you why. So at first I tried just telling it to look for the D drive and I noticed it kept saying, it, it kept running the sync and it kept creating a ton of folders and crap. And I was like, why the heck is it doing this? This is super annoying. I just want it to work. So if we go into our command prompt and uh, point out once again, I still don't have my D drive plugged in. I'll go drag that. Oh no, stupid windows. Uh, there we go. So you can see my drives there. So let's go into bash and cd mount. You'll notice that the D drive is still there. And the reason it does that is because, as I said, when you mount uh, physical drives or remote drives in a Linux file system, then it has to have a folder to or some directory where it can quote unquote attach that physical storage to. So when you mount a network drive in Windows, it pops up as, you know, in my case, the Z drive. When you do it in Linux, you'll, you will uh, assign it to a folder, if you will. So then you can browse the contents of that folder, and that folder is actually your remote uh, file storage. So it, ha it maintains that folder. So, but if I change directory to the D drive, then you'll see that there's nothing in there. Excuse me. Well, that wasn't the case when I told it to just, excuse me, change directory to mount D drive because it was always able to change to the D drive, but since there's no drive plugged in now, it can't change to the backups uh, folder. And so that is what I came up with. Let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, I'm excited to see how well it works in the coming days. Uh, my current for my current storage needs, uh, this is going to last quite some time. I'm trying to look at the size of a drive that isn't plugged into my computer. It is, it is one in the morning. I'm too tired for this. But anyways, so let's see how much space is being used. Properties, 30 gigabytes. Okay, so I've got a fair amount of storage left. Uh, 450 odd gigabytes left. And yeah, so that's my desktop documents, OneDrive and pictures. OneDrive I'll probably get rid of as I mentioned before. It's, it's only like one gigabyte of data anyway, so I don't really, you know, it's nothing. Um, I probably will have it start to back up my virtual machines because I have quite a few of them, uh, as you can see. And yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, if this works for you, then let me know. Um, like I said, I'm going to try and figure out how to get it to work with 
remote shares. I'd like to get that working. And I'm also going to try and see if there's uh, versioning within rsync. I want to be able, or I think it would be cool if I could go back and say, okay, on this date specifically, uh, what was the status of this file? And that's something I, from the, to me, that's something that would be really useful. So I'm gonna look into that. I might make another video if I can figure out exactly how to do that in a you know storage conserving way. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think. Have a good day.